And what's up, guys? Welcome back to the OS Rick Project episode 83. Guys, thank you very much for hanging out. I appreciate y'all being here. Guys, how are y'all? Welcome back to the show. Hope everything is well. How have you, how have you guys been? What y'all been up to? What have y'all been playing? What have y'all been watching? Uh, guys, thank you for hanging out. Um, let's get right into it, guys. So today, I came home from work. I exercised. And then I saw... A couple of tweets and stuff on Reddit about Riot Games having some layoffs, and I was like, "Man, if my and and I want to preface this, guys. And if, if you have known me for any length of time, I'm going. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm having some Street Fighter Six playing in the background, some online matches that I had the other day. So uh, um, feel free to judge my gameplay, okay? But um, um, I just want to preface this 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 episode with I am not a fan of Riot Games. I'm not a fan of how they of their business, you know, being in in uh, being embedded with Tencent. Um I don't like and I know Tencent is in everything, right? Like they're even in Stormsoft, which I'm not a big fan of, which which has me concerned. Uh, I'm not a fan of how they do all their microtransactions, how they do their games. And what I mean by the, the how their games, I'm sorry, I just mean mostly just how they, mostly just the microtransactions. That's I, I do not like that at all. And you know what? Um, I, 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 a lot of you are probably gonna be like, well, you know, if it's cosmetic only, I have no problem. You know, the only time I care if it's pay to win, that's fine. That that's that's y'all's take. That's cool. Okay, I'm just giving you my two cents on Hafa, and I don't like microtransactions at all. Y'all know that already about me. If you have, if you have, uh heard me talk already but anyways so i'm not a fan of theirs of course no i no, i never go out there wishing well on anybody wishing ill on anybody but uh it turns out they are having some layoffs uh i saw it uh you guys could just look up the the, the statement that the ceo mr dylan jadeja I'm, so, I'm probably saying that wrong guys sorry but uh apparently they had like a long message about how uh, you know got some layoffs and stuff like that and it looks like they're having 530 roles globally, which is around 11% of the workforce being laid off. And they're going to be let known. They're going to be let them know via email, which I was like, really? Oh, I guess if it's globally, you got to like, that's the only way you can reach people. I mean, I don't know. I figured, you know, call you into the office and be like, look, man. Hey, Rick, uh, you know, really appreciate your work here, but things are tight and um, well, we're going to have to let you go. So apparently, guys, what I seen just from from the statement, they're getting some severance package and they're going to help the folks, which and that's what I feel for. I feel mostly for the game developers, right? It's, it's not it's not how, you know, it's not up to them how management runs things, how the, the, the higher ups, the CEOs decide to, you know, um, run the company and they're just there to just make it. I'm sorry, guys, I'm watching my gameplay. But uh, I, I picked some quotes, guys, out of it, and I'm not trying to get things out of context. I'm just picking things that I feel that were interesting to me. And you guys should go in there and look at it for yourself so you could see what I'm talking about. Right? So some of the things they were saying is that Mr. Uh, Mr. Dylan, the CEO, was talking about, says some of the significant investments we've made aren't paying off the way we expected them to. I think I saw, I just did a quick Google search. Uh, I think Valorant makes like $20 million for them a year. So, I mean, I, that's working for them. That, that I mean, that's making some money, right? Uh, I know they got like so much other stuff going on. They got a whole bunch of irons in the fire and, and they're trying some different things. I know they said they're going to sunset riot forge. Riot Forge. Apparently, it's gonna be some like games that they were gonna make with some other developers. That I guess the, the, the that's gonna be gone. Okay, I know if they mentioned some stuff way before, and I saw some things that were like interesting, but I guess they decided it's not worth following it up. Um, another thing I, I I saw in that statement was I want to be super clear about something. This is absolutely the last thing we want we ever wanted to do. I was like, wow, last thing you ever wanted to do. Okay. So did you take a pay cut? Did you guys, like, how much money are these guys making? And, like, I'm just doing just my research is just going, doing some Google searches and looking around. Okay. 
apparently, and this is just the thing I picked off of salary.com. So please guys, if you have better information than I do, let me know. I can't bet this. I'm not in the financial world. I don't know how much they make. I don't got their LinkedIn, but it just says, look, uh, looking at what salary.com said, average annual salary over 1 million. You're telling me I could be completely wrong, right? If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. like, uh, just take it with, you know, Hey, it is what it is. You're telling me the last thing you want to do is fire these people, lay these people off. You're making $1 million. How much money? I mean, let's just say they're not even making a million. Let's just making, they're, they're making uh 700,000 a year. You're telling me you can't just shave off some of that. You're like, how much more money do you need? Um, what else? Oh, and, and I just did another Google search, right? I was like, how much does riot? What's the, the annual income for riot? Google said $1.8 billion. Think, let, let that sink in for a minute, guys. So this, this whole letter that, that, uh, Mr. Dylan wrote, you know, I, I get these, I get these vibes of like crocodile tears. Like, oh man, we really wish this didn't have to happen. This sucks. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to like send John email. You know, to let you know that you won't might not be working here. Your rules are going to be changing. Um, of course, they're getting like they're getting a severance package. So I mean, that, better than nothing, right? And of course, uh, I mean, I think we are kind of in that age where, you know, I think if you guys follow the video game business, at least on the sales and the numbers and stuff during COVID, I mean, it was through the roof. I mean, everybody was locked inside, had nothing to do. They played video games. They had all this time in their hand. I mean, billion game, video games, I'm about to say million video games were just, you know, raking it in huge. Right. And that's another, that's another tangent I could go in on why they're trying to make all these movies and stuff because of the install base. Right. And, you know, I, I, that's why we got like a lot of games that were delayed during COVID. And then, you know, we had like a whole bunch of games come out in 2023 because everything that got delayed is finally coming out. But eventually that bubble will burst. And I guess they're not making as much money as they want. I guess they, they want the, you know, they want their extra yacht or their, their ivory back scratcher. So they got to make some layoffs. Um, how do you guys feel about it? Again, I feel bad for the developers that people actually work there because I'm pretty sure the higher ups are going to be just fine. I'm sure they are not hurting at all. They are not, in any danger of, 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 uh, losing their house or anything. I'm sure they're going to be just fine. Now, my concern about this is as a fighting game player and fighting game enthusiast, fan of the genre, uh, the future of project L now, again, I'm not a fan of riot games. I have, I, 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 I thought I was interested in playing it. And then I realized, Oh no, this is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to log in. They're going to want my information. I don't know what they're going to do with it. And that's goes with, that goes with all these companies, right? All these companies want your, your, your information login. Um, but, and just the, the, the way they just monetize everything, um, free to play, rotate characters, here's some skins. I don't like, look, look, I'm not a fan of it at all, but I was curious. Now I wonder what, what's going to happen with this game. Is it still going to be coming out? Are they pushing it back? Is it going to just going to have to, are we going to have to wait or, or, or what? I mean, are you guys still excited for it? I mean, honestly, honestly, if you're a fighting game fan, you have a lot of games to choose from. I know I, I and I'm pretty sure project L when, it, if it ever comes out, I'm pretty sure it's going to have insane amount of numbers when it first come out. Cause they're going to have all of the install base from probably Valorant are going to want to try it out. I'm sure people from league of legends are going to want to try it out. You know, maybe people, uh, fans of the TV so series, uh, arcane that came out on Netflix are probably going to want to check it out. I, I don't know. Um, but I'm sure they'll have some of that install base come over to see with that game, how it plays. Um, I, I don't know what's in the future for that game. And honestly do not care. That, that's just my, my, my take on it. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Like guys, I mean, I, I saw this whole statement. I saw people were talking about it on Twitter and. Uh, and I saw something on Reddit and I just like, man, let me just do some quick Google search and see what I find. And of course, I mean, I could be totally wrong. I could, you know, have, you know, open mouth, insert foot, but, um, 
I don't know. When they say stuff like that's the last thing we want to do, it's like, well, take a pay cut, dude. How much money are you guys making? You're telling me, I mean, you're telling me 530 people global, world, uh, worldwide, and you made this much money? Because for what? For more money? So anyways, guys, that's how I feel about that. Maybe I don't, I'm not a fan of Riot Games. You are. Hey, that's on, that's on you guys. That's on you guys. Um, Let's talk about, I have a whole bunch of little things I want to talk about, but I'm going to probably save those for another podcast. Uh, I want to focus on, on one other thing. Um, the Xbox Developer Direct 2024. Uh, it came out a couple of days ago. Uh, did, guys, did y'all catch it? Did y'all see it? Uh, what would you think of it? Um, you know, I, I feel like uh, as a fan of video games, seeing things, seeing these developers, stuff like that, these these, these um, Treehouse Directs, these State of Plays, you know, these, you know, you know, these presentations, these showcases that, that come from from the video game companies. I think it's fun. It's cool. I mean, I still miss big things like E3, uh, you know, uh, Game Awards. That's kind of like this, this winter. It's like winter E3, you know, just with, you know, celebrities and awards tacked onto it. You know, I, I miss the, having the big the big events uh, and, and, and seeing the game reveals and game announcements and stuff like that. But, you know, having these little ones sprinkled out across the year, that's fine too, right? I, I, I'll take what I can get. Um, you know, all these games that I saw here, I didn't care about any of them. None of them said, yo, I am excited for this. I can't wait for that. I, nothing, nothing looked good to me. And, I, and let me tell you, let me, let me tell you a little about myself, guys. If this is your first time listening, I love, I enjoy fighting games. I like Souls games. I like action games. I like uh, turn-based uh, JRPGs. You know, I I'm not a fan of cinematics. I don't like games with uh, taking control, taking agency away from the player. I'm not a fan of that. Okay, I want to. I want. I'm interested in the mechanics of the game. Storytelling takes a backseat. Visuals take a backseat. It's all about the gameplay. Is it fun? Now. Some games like Cyberpunk, where the eye candy is really good, hey, that, that really just adds to the world. I like it. I enjoy it. But to me, it's all about the gameplay. How fun is it? And looking at these games, I don't think there's anything there that says, again, that that, that I'm excited for. And, and and I'm curious on what's y'all's take on it, because I really do feel like these, these, these kind of a theme of what this, uh, during this developer direct is I, I kept getting the theme of, you know, them saying stuff like, Oh, for the modern audience, for the modern gamer. And, and I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Like, like the young kids, the, 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 the games for now games that people for, for people who play things on mobile, like what's the modern gamer? I don't know that because I play games in, in the now, you know, I play games back then. Is this going to be for me also? Because from what I've seen, it doesn't look like it. It all looks like a whole bunch of cinematic first and then gameplay third, maybe even maybe even uh, second. I don't know. Um, case in point, it started off with the very first one I saw from Obsidian Entertainment about fantasy action RPG. And you see all these people, the developers just talking and talking about the game and what could happen and decisions and what impacts like, OK, cool okay now show me some gameplay what are you guys doing and they'll just show you these little snippets and look i'm not here to judge on the on the visuals of the game i, I know these are still like a uh, work in progress i understand there's, there's there's still lots to be done before the release date we'll talk about the release dates later so i'm not gonna judge it on the visuals okay it's it is what it is i mean uh it, it might need some polish but just look at the gameplay. Nothing in there said like, "Oh man, I, I want to play this. This is like fun." Um, Avowed, it, it it just looked like, uh, you know, Obsidian. They they did what? Uh, Fallout Vegas. They did the Outer Worlds. Decisions might matter. Okay. Uh, what about the what else are we doing besides like first person combat? Like, is I mean, I I, I maybe once I get the game in my hand. And I get options and, and, and able to switch between the weapons that I could use. Maybe that'll be more fun. But even looking at the worlds, the worlds didn't look too bad. The worlds look okay. They look kind of colorful. They look pretty cool. Not not too bad. Um, but nothing on there. 
man. It's just, uh, you know, and it, it, it looks like it's it's doing the stuff that you've seen in other in other kind of like these first person RPG games, like you know, dialogue wheels, you know, first person combat, you know, just switching weapons, um, a fantasy setting. Like if, it looks like it's all this stuff is like very safe. Like I, I like I've seen this before. Like and I don't know what's gonna separate it from the rest of the pack. So, um, the cover art looked cool for Avowed. Uh, the next one, I, I think, I think this is the one from Ninja Theory, Senua's Saga, Hellblade Two. Now, this one, I thought was already out. I already thought it was out. I, I've been seeing it. They've been they've been teasing it trailering it for a while now i was like oh this game must have just came and and, and i must have forgot about it and that's it i remember the one of my friends played it a, the first one a long time ago and he told me about it it's like and i saw some gameplay i was like oh so you kind of just like walk around and you see puzzles and then you gotta you see him like in, in somewhere in like in a vision like in what like in your field of vision and you kind of like change the camera angle to line things up and then you'll the passage will open up like okay so it's kind of like a walking puzzles. Oh, but you really got it. Like, but apparently, like the 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 audio is where it really shines. And you play with headphones because apparently the main character, uh, Senua, is schizophrenic or something like that. So she's always hearing things, and that's the best way to enjoy it. Like, okay, that's cool. But like, what do you, what do you do? Like, no, you just kind of just walk. Okay. So, anyways, some of the quotes from from these folks, from these developers, um, and. Gosh, they had like a lot of game footage, like a lot of footage of these developers just kind of doing their thing. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'm sorry, guys, I don't care. I just want to see what the games are about, right? But they were talking about, uh, they're combining. Oh, I think the, the first two that was on there. Uh, combine high fidelity and immersion, pres an immersive presentation with a shorter narrative-led experience. It's like okay. Okay, so just reading that first part, right? And, and guys, please go watch that video because I don't want you to take everything like like I'm trying to take things out of context. I'm just picking up with things that I, that I, I hear and, and and explain it to you guys. So so please get the full context. Go watch it, right? Combine high fidelity and immersive presentation with a shorter narrative led experience. So you're literally saying we want visuals, and then story and where's the gameplay rank in that like 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 these cinematic games you know sony first party and now you know xbox even the xbox man they don't have anything that's i haven't seen anything great from first party uh uh, uh microsoft but just seeing that, that that line i was like are you serious guys this is this is this is and look there's a whole bunch of different folks that like different types of games. But when I see this, it's like, oh, this is for the modern gamers. I thought I was a modern gamer, but I guess I guess I'm not because I don't care for this crap, you know. But now I get to watch a movie of a Viking, a Viking babe or a Celtic babe. Sorry, fighting some Vikings. Um, and like I said, it looks like it's looks over story, over gameplay. Yeah. Um, bro, bro, one of them said, oh, we're going to. We're going to try to be faithful to history up to a point, but she'll be facing giants. So I was like, okay, so, so what are we, what are we doing here? So you want to be faithful to, I guess, to the time period, I guess, having like the settings and like the, the like the, like, you know, locations, the clothing, the weapon, but you're also going to have giants. So, okay. Okay. I get it. You kind of have to gamify, right? You got to make it like a, you know, fantastical to want people to get in there, right? Now I'm curious if they're gonna go like the route of like God of War Ragnarok and put like forced diversity on there, and put like you know people of color, <laughs> like with the uh, with the Vikings that that'll be that'll be faithful, right? So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But honestly, just right out the bat, when I saw them, just the lines that these guys were using to describe their game, I'm like, oof, modern gamer. That's 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 what that's for. Uh, they use a whole bunch of motion capture. A whole bunch of motion capture. Um, yeah. 
yeah, they showed they they were they were they were quick to show what they do with the motion capture and the performance capture. Like, okay, all right, guys. So I, we we get it. You guys want to go very cinematic. Um, <laughs> if this is pissing you off, guys, I like if I'm pissing you off. Well, then you're probably not my target audience. If you're hearing this and it's pissing you off, well, then we're probably we we probably are not fans of these modern games. Okay. Uh, next game they had on there was Visions of Mana. From Square Enix. Looks like Microsoft is trying to dip in, dip into the Japanese market. And I saw this like, oh, Square Enix, cool. Visions of Mana. I'm like, Visions of Mana. Okay. Maybe a, maybe a Final Fantasy port or or something with Final Fantasy. You know, some of the, some, some of the, the, the big games coming out. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe say, hey, after the exclusivity with... Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We're gonna put uh, we're gonna put it on Xbox. I don't know, maybe something like that. I don't uh, Visions of Mana. And then I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute, Square Enix isn't even freaking a Microsoft developer. This is like a third party developer. What are you guys like? They're just they're just putting stuff. Uh, I guess they just gotta let you know, like, hey, we got if you if you like. JRPGs, we got something for you. Uh, but just looking at the game, I was like, okay, that's cool. And I really just did not care. I don't think I've ever played a, a, a mana trials game of, of mana game. So it, it, it's it's there. So if you like JRPGs, which I do, uh, I guess you have an option to play that. So uh, what else, guys? Uh, Aura, History Untold from Oxide. Apparently it's what they this, this, this apparently these folks were calling it a 4X game and I was like what's a 4X game guys maybe my maybe my boomer brain doesn't know what a 4X game cuz honestly that's not my type I don't care about civilization sim games RT uh real time strategy that was on my cup of tea all right but then I get to 4X game I'm like what's a 4X game so I just googled it and wikipedia was nice to tell me that it is the 4X stands for explore expand exploit and exterminate so that, that game's coming out on PC. Who's excited for those? Anybody? Like, have you guys ever played those games before? Do you ever, like, like, like have a blast? Like, say, oh, man, I can't wait to get in there. And, and they, you know, they're talking about all the things, how your choices make a difference. And they have different uh, cultures and leaders from different times. Which got me thinking. I was like, I wonder how much those, like, how much will they go into, you know, like the were they going to dictators? I mean, what kind of dictators are we talking about? Like and 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 emperors? Like I want I'm curious on how on how far they go on that route, or they try to change it for, you know, because it's not historically accurate enough for them, or it doesn't fit their historical uh, narrative or something. I'm curious. Uh, and then we got to the last one, guys. Machine games. They are making Indiana Jones: The Great Circle. It's like executive producer uh, Todd Howard. Like what? Who's the, let me check out Machine Games. Oh, they're a subsidiary of Zenimax. You know the the parent company that owned Bethesda, I, ID, and and uh, all Arcane on all them. The guys who you know that Microsoft bought to get all of uh you know uh, Bethesda stuff and on all them. Yeah, they're, they're they're part of that 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 package. I'm like, okay, cool. So, so my first impression of the games, I, I, I like to, I actually watched it twice, guys. I watched it twice. I watched it Sunday afternoon and again Sunday evening. So, the indie game, from from what I see, the face models, you know, it looks like Harrison Ford. All the facial models, they look, they look, they look pretty cool. They look pretty cool. Okay. Uh, pretty spot on. You know, they're, they're uh, really trying to get the, you know, that motion capture and the cinematics. They're, they're, they, the models look good. Indy looks like Indy. He looks like Harrison, like a young Harrison Ford. Um, but just looking at the gameplay, it looked slow. And I don't want to judge it right now because, again, it could change, you know, subject to car, you know, game subject to change before it comes out. But just looking at the game, it looked super slow. I mean, they're talking about, oh, yeah, you know, they really wanted to let you know that, you know, the puzzles were there, which uh, makes sense. You know, Dr. Jones is an archaeologist, so he has to go in there and solve the puzzle on the solve the puzzles in the temples to get the treasure and stuff like that. And then they got to some of the combat part and it just felt like 
yeah, you have, you know, your whip and you could get like, uh, you could improvise and get some weapons to knock out enemies because, you know, and of course you have your revolver and stuff, but it, it just looked very slow. Like, like the enemies were dumb. Like they're literally just holding like, like the gun and just like kind of waiting for you to attack you. I like, I don't know, maybe the game was set on easy or something, but it's just like, you know, one shot and Indy's dead. And then like when he like swing his whip and they kind of just stand there like, oh, you can use your weapon, your whip to distract them. And he kind of cracks the whip and the enemy just kind of like turns at the like to the side. Like, oh, I, let me look what's over here. Like, no, dude, if you heard like a, you're guarding something and you heard a whip crack, you're like, yo, what was, what was that? I was like, oh, okay, cool. All right. Okay. Okay. For the modern gamer. Okay. It's not me. But looking at the puzzle, like they really want to let you know that, that, you know, it's, it's all about the puzzles and stuff like that. Um, and maybe like, maybe it's not so much about combat, but more like, how do you get around the combat? Maybe more stealthy isk, but it just felt like combat was definitely not at the forefront. You know, it, it like, like, like I never played any of the Uncharted games, but they all seem like an, like, a, like an action pack game where you, you have a blend of, you know, the, the, you know, the action part, the gaming part, and then, you know, actually do like the, 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 I guess the tomb raiding stuff, right? Tomb Raider before Tomb Raider, or Tomb Raider was that? You don't talk about that. You don't talk. About that. Anyways, but uh, the game's gonna be in first person, but you know it'll have it like pull out, so you can see Indy do some things like climb a ladder or something. Um, but during this part, I, I did notice even the developers were talking about like, oh, we want to make Indy a. We're gonna have a first person. It'll be first person. And uh, you can live as indie and have it be a movie-like approach to cinematic. So a cinematic approach, movie-like approach to the cinematic. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at my own notes. Uh, and again, like, that's what they kind of, like, you started hearing that, like, cinematic, cinematic, you know, immersive. is like, uh, and of course, they're always showing film of how they have the mo captures uh, you know, on and, you know, doing all this stuff, like action scenes. I'm like, okay, okay, all right. So this is what we have to look forward to. You know, and they're talking about, well, okay, well, well maybe maybe people enjoy puzzles, right? So, you know, they said, you know, there's going to be some puzzles along the way that you have to do to to progress the game, which makes sense, right? You're, you are a Tomb Raider. You got to go in there. You're an archaeologist, I should say. You got to find the puzzles to get the treasures. And they said there'll be also some puzzles you know you could do optionally if you just like to do the puzzles which okay which makes sense so like like i said I, i'm getting more emphasis like this is puzzles first and then the whole combat action part later um so you know and they always talk about like we want to make a game for everyone oh okay so another part two i understood and look guys i am not i have no issues with strong female protagonist in, in games or anything. Like I have no problems with, with, uh, uh, Sigourney's Weaver, uh, Sigourney Weaver's character from aliens. I have no problems with Laura Croft. I have no problem with, with Samus. I have no problems with, you know, like, like strong female characters. I have no issues, right? It's when, it's when you start having a strong female issue, a, a, a strong female lead. And then like everybody around her is, is, is incompetent. Like she's the only one that, that could do something. She's like the badass, you know, she's the Mary Sue. That that's when it's just forced on you. That's when I'm just like, okay, I check out. I'm done. I get it. You're you're a badass. Okay. So uh, apparently, so the oh my god, hold on, hold on, hold on. But anyways, the one of the guy, the, the one of the, the guys in the games, the, the, the direct uh, developers was like, so you'll also be sharing, and also equal protagonists will be. Gina. Okay. So, you know, a little, I guess, like, I don't want to say indie sidekick because I don't know if you're going to have to be, like, like forced to play as her. But when they say you're going to have, it's going to be, you know, an equal protagonist, I'm like, I thought it was called an Indiana Jones. Why Why would I play as her, you know, or, or, or anybody else? Like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like having a Spider-Man game and then being forced to play as freaking... Um, I don't know, Miles' girlfriend or something, or, or Mary Jane. Like, you know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's called this, but you're actually going to be playing as another character. Look, guys, I've got, I've been hit with the bait and switch. All right. 
I've played Metal Gear Solid 2. You start the tanker mission. You're playing as Snake. You're like, all right, cool, dude. You, and you finally finish it. You fight Olga. You get exit the freaking tanker. And then here's the big shell. And then you see some dude come, like st- sneaking in there. Like, Who's this dude? Is Raiden? Well, okay. Well, I'm sure you just got to play as Raiden. And then, you know, you, the game will probably switch and you'll, you'll, you'll play as Snake, right? And then you keep playing. You keep playing. Then you see JG Pliskin. Oh, it's Snake. Sweet. I'm going to be, I'm going to start playing as Snake. And then, then Raiden will maybe kind of like just assist you or something along the way, right? No. You know. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen, bro. That doesn't happen. You play, you're playing from riding the whole way out, right? So look, guys, I know, I know about the whole bait and switch, right? I'm just hoping this doesn't become like, oh, Indiana Jones, and actually, no, it's 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 Indiana and Gina, and the Great Circle. It's like what? I just don't want them to do that stuff. It's like, come on, dude. Like, 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 if if you want to make another character get like the same or more spotlight than the main character, like make a game for them. Well, they can't because no one recognizes them and nobody will buy it. So you have to attach it to someone who does have the install uh, fan base. So when I saw that, I'm just like, dude, like, uh, dude, just do it right. Just do it right. Don't make it like where you have to play a character you don't care about, man. Cause that sucks. Games for everyone, right? For the modern gamer. Uh, what else, guys? Um, yeah, but overall, I think that was it. That, I think, I, I'm, again, guys, I don't want to. Ju- I don't want to be too harsh on these games because I mean, maybe by the time they can, oh, and they all said they're all going to be coming out. They're all going to be coming out in 2024. Which, if I was a betting man, and you told me, and I told you, hey, or if you told me, hey, Rick, these. Microsoft is saying these are all going to come out in 2024. I bet you a hundred bucks that one of them will be delayed. I'd probably be like, you know what? That sounds like a safe bet. There's five games in here. One of them has to be delayed to the, to whatever date they, 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 some other date they, they posted on there. I would take that bet. So seeing that's another thing too, right guys? Look, if your game is more than two years out, don't show me it. Okay, well, maybe just give me like a like a, like a little flash, like a like a little like a little uh, just a little uh, a, a trait, not a trailer, but like a banner, just say like so and so in works. Okay, that way I, I know it's in works, right? But you show me game footage and then still in development, still in development, still in development, early access, early access, early access. Actually, we're shutting down the early access. Like, don't don't do that. Like, okay, here's your game coming out. Cool. All right. So I don't know, guys. I'm pretty sure that's one of these games was probably going to get pushed back. I wouldn't be surprised. But overall, dude, my impressions of this, like, look, I'm glad that we have these. I'm glad we can watch these. That's cool. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's I, I can't critique it and, and and give you my honest take on what I uh, what on, on what I see. Because honestly, these games, I don't care. They don't look fun. They don't look cool. They look like they're trying to go for the safe stuff. They're going for the the, the cinematics. They're going for the the immersion, the storytelling. Which I don't. I always feel like that's that should be. Uh, placed at second and third and, and gameplay should be king so we'll see um how these games come out I, I do you like these games guys do you appreciate them if you do let me know what do you like about them is it the story is it the immersion is it the graphics is, is that what really like makes you enjoy a game uh and and how do you feel about gameplay like is that something am i just harping on the wrong things is this something that you know with the, am, am I out of touch with the modern gamer? Am I not the modern gamer? So let me know how you feel, guys, because I'm very interested. And I got some other things I want to rattle off, but those I'm going to save them for another episode. This one's already running over 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep them nice and tight. So anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, uh, and I'm, uh, do you like the gameplay? I haven't the 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 the. the game footage i've been keeping in the background just something to look at while you know you, you hear me rant and rave about you know what's going on in gaming but yeah it looks like modern gamers for modern games like what does that mean what does that mean like maybe maybe we should get keep maybe not everybody should be playing games maybe maybe if you can't play it they're not for you you ever think about that maybe you just can't play video games maybe you're not good at them sorry maybe you should just go read a book that's how you get a great story 
anyways, guys, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate you. I love y'all. Um, do all the good stuff, you know, like subscribe and follow and comment, whatever. But anyways, guys, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Have a good night and I will see y'all next time. Bye. <gasps> I forget that's the wrong one. <laughs>